Welcome back to the South Carolina Gamecocks Dynasty Mode here in College Football Revamped. We are taking on the 17th ranked Missouri Tigers as our season four continues in SEC play. The Tigers are 17th for a reason. They have a stingy defense and they have gotten a few turnovers the last couple games they've played. As you can see, only allowing 209 passing yards and 128 rushing yards. They have a very very solid defensive unit and that is something that we need to be aware of as you can see the the sources are selecting missouri to win this one they lead us in a lot of statistical categories we lead them just barely in passing offense total defense and a couple other categories but missouri has had a tough schedule they beat alabama they lost to georgia so they basically have the same schedule as us they beat a ranked team and they lost to georgia as well um, we've played obviously tennessee instead of them uh, another ranked matchup but at the end of the day, Sam Horn has been amazing for the Tigers. Almost 2,000 yards, 20 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Tavoris Jones has 9 touchdowns on the ground, and Luther Burden has 8 touchdowns through the air. Braden Davis will continue to start for us, but let's go ahead and get down to the field. Thomas Mayhew kicks it back, and that is going to be uh, returnable by Harris, but he's going to kneel it down. And Sam Horn, the uniquely numbered quarterback, 21 is his jersey number. You don't see that very often in the in football at all. But Sam Horn makes it work. He's going to start his day on a second and six. Horn's rolling out, has some time to throw. Instead, the pass is going to sail well past his running back, who was open, but not like crazy open. If he had got it to him, he's probably got a good 10-yard catch and run, but still a third and six now. That one is broken up by Eman Nori. The veteran safety has been so vital to this defensive unit, and the Gamecocks get a quick stop. They're going to start the day with a run to Carroll, and Lavacia Carroll, nothing going. He struggled to start the year. He's been good the last few weeks, but Carroll has not Got anything going early in this one. Third and eight. Braden Davis is going to want to throw it, but he's sacked and wrapped up, throwing him to the ground. Braden Davis gets brought down by Xavier Simmons. The first sack of the day goes to the Tigers' defense, and that is just a great way for them to start the day now. Missouri gets the ball back quickly. Third and ten. Sam Horn's going to fire to the outside, and Miller makes the grab. Stays on his feet down past the 50. And into South Carolina territory around the 45-yard line. Markham at the 43. First and 10. Horn's going to run an option play. He is quickly snuffed out. He's going to lose two on the play in the Gamecocks defense. Nick Barrett, the senior defensive lineman with a big stop. Now third and 15. Horn rolling around and he's hit. Brought down that time, Rory Patrick, the big sophomore All-American on the defensive line, continues to dominate offensive line units. And the Gamecocks force another punt, so a defensive standoff so far, that one. Oh man, Damian Wilson had an interception, maybe even a pick six in his hands. Braden Davis, just a bad pass, and now a third and five. Davis is going to fire to Carroll on the outside. He's running for the first, but he gets upended and uprooted there. Marking it at a fourth and one, and they are going to go for it. Braden Davis gives it to Carroll. He doesn't get it. Lavacia Carroll is short of the first down to gain. And the Gamecocks turn it over on downs as Missouri will get the ball back inside the 30. Mar mark him at the 32, actually. Horn on first and 10 stumbles, but instead he gets it to the big tight end who breaks a couple tackles, and Max Wisner... He's got 13 on the play now, second and three later on the drive. The Tigers right around the 10. He's at the 11 now, second and three. Wisner's going to go in motion. Horn's going to fake the handoff to Jones. He's got some pressure. Fires to Jones at the last second. A little dump off, but still nothing going there. So a third and three now. The Tigers, you do not want to squander this good field position. Horn's going to take the snap fire. Under pressure, should have been picked off. Justin Birdsong couldn't get both hands on it, and instead it is a field goal and a 3-0 lead for the Tigers as that one should have been picked off as well. Dalen Carnell, a second straight dropped interception by this Missouri defense, and Braden Davis now a third and nine under pressure, evading the tacklers, wants to throw at the last second and another dropped interception. The rain is once again affecting Braden Davis. He starts 2 of 5 today, 
And three of those incompletions, all three of them could have likely been interceptions now as we set up a first and 10 for the Tigers. Horn's going to go to the pitch to Jones. Jones all over him. Tavoris Jones loses four. The Gamecocks defense did not fall for the stretch play there. Third and 17. Now another deep drop for Horn into coverage and he's caught. But Luther Purden could not get much more as he turned around and there was three defenders around him. And the Gamecocks now get the ball back with a chance to take the lead or tie it still. First and 10. Late pass. Brandon Hammond on the angle route. He's got a five-yard catch there. Hammond as the backup has been very serviceable. He's going to get his chance next year. But as of right now, Brandon Hammond, a six-yard first down run. And now they move the chain second and 10. Now Hammond continues to be very good for us. Play action. Davis immediately brought down. Had a man open in the flats. But the guy that was supposed to be guarding him, Dalen Carnell, was able to get pressure. And he brought Davis down. So now a third and 17. Davis play action. He is thrown down again. Good field position is squandered. This one's Marcus Scott the second, coming in on a corner blitz. He's untouched, and he just grabs Braden Davis and throws him down. Davis really didn't stand a chance. You've got to get rid of the ball quicker than that, but still not good blocking for the Tigers. Tavoris Jones, however, he's going to lose four again. His running game, Cole Robinson, brings him down on the edge, the left defensive end. And now it is a second and 14. Horn's going to bring his tight end in motion. That's Wisner, I believe, behind the line of scrimmage. Horn's going to look to throw it this time. He's got some space into coverage, and it's picked off. Quad Banks returning it, cutting into the middle of the field, and that one is desperately needed for this Gamecocks defense. Quad Banks creates a turnover, and they have a great field position now for their offense. They've set him up good in Missouri field position. And now they quickly do have a third and eight, though. Braden Davis is going to take the snap, wants to throw under pressure, fires off his back foot. Jamari and Wayne is going to deflect it to the ground. And instead of anything, the Gamecocks are going to settle for three. This one's going to be Marcus Clark. He's going to kick it up and good. So after a tough freshman campaign, Marcus Clark continues to strive and thrive as a sophomore. Tavoris Jones this time is going to spin off of the first tackler, pushing his way downfield. And he's around midfield, maybe past it. But a big run there still was hit in the backfield. But this time, Jones did a great job to get off the first tackler. Cole Robinson had to bring him down about 17 yards down the field. Sam Horn's now going to take off and run with it. Second and eight is going to turn into a first and 10 after the 13-yard run by Horn. And the Tigers now cooking here. Third and 10, though. They're one of five on third down, so they've struggled today. Sam Horn takes the snap, wants to throw outside. He's got horse camp. Ryan Horskamp, I think I've been getting him and Wisner mixed up the whole day. Wisner wears 88. Horskamp is 84 now, third and five. They're going to settle for a run. Tavoris Jones, obviously nowhere to go. So instead of going aggressive, the Tigers are going to settle for a longest field goal. This one's about 30-something. So now Macon with a nice hold, and they are up, and they are good. And Missouri's going to go up 6 to nothing. but the Gamecocks, after a good return... Have a second and 10 right around midfield. Braden Davis is going to find Scott Hall. He was running a post route, but he's got a 20-yard catch. He split the defenders. And now a first and 10. The clock, 51 seconds left to play action again. Braden Davis looks to go downfield. And the coverage Robinson drops it. He had a chance at a nice first down game, but that's going to set him up with a third and 10. Braden Davis steps up, and he is sacked. No one was able to get open and bad separation by the receivers. Instead, it is a 4th and 15. DJ Weselak with the bring down of the quarterback. And now we head into halftime. Up or down by 3, unfortunately. Braden Davis gets lit up to start the second half. He's got to be more careful than that. I'm glad he held on to it. They have a 2nd and 16 now. Davis is going to fire across the middle to Robinson. He had the tough drop that kind of stalled out that drive at the end of the second quarter. Instead, now they have a third and eight looking for the first down. Braden Davis goes to Carroll, and Carroll drops it. He heard footsteps potentially, but now the Tigers are going to get the ball back up 6-3 to three in this third quarter. They've got a chance to extend their lead. Now Sam Horn's going to fire to Burden, and the third or junior or senior receiver with an excellent grab now, first and 10. Sam Horn's going to take the snap, wants to throw again. Under pressure and sacked. Cole Robinson heard the plea of the fans to get more pressure. 
And just like that, the left side of this defensive line is showing up today. Robinson, a multiple tackle for loss game, and now a third and eight for the Tigers. They've struggled on third downs. Horn setting up a screen instead. It is blown up, and he's brought down again. Rory Patrick has him that time. His second sack of the day, his third tackle of the day. He does a nice job evading the blocker. And right as Horn is about to throw it, the Gamecocks get the sack they needed. Now, first and 10, Carroll's got a run. He's going to cut up to the left side. He's going to break a tackle, but he's quickly brought down. Didn't gain much more after the tackle was broken. Second and one, though, after the nice nine-yard gain, Carroll's going to be content to go up the middle, and he's got the first down. That's going to set them up first and 10 inside Missouri Territory on the 45. Braden Davis scrambling, fires to Sampson. Landon Sampson into the end zone, and it's going to be brought back, I imagine, that looked like holding, and Brandon Robinson is going to be called for the holding at the one, but that sets us up on a second and eight. Braden Davis takes it into coverage. Carroll stays on his feet, cuts outside, and it's a touchdown anyways. Lavacia Carroll goes up and gets it. He got upended by the legs, and he stays on his feet. Comes down with the tough spinning grab in midair, and he runs to the outside into the open field, and that is a touchdown for Carolina. So the first lead of the day for the Gamecocks, 10-6. Sam Horn this time hurdling a man, breaking into the open field. They've got to break him down or bring him down past the 20. Justin Birdsong misses it, and he's shoved out of bounds after 66 yards at the five-yard line. Sam Horn trucks a guy, hurdles a man on the ground, and he just was wide open after that one. Justin Birdsong and the company there in the secondary does a great job of tracking him down after a penalty. They've got a first and goal deep in Carolina territory, though, this time the freshman Jones is going to bring him down in the backfield. And now they have a third and goal from about the 16. Sam Horn, you need some points here. Horn's going to fire outside to Burden. They're going to give him the catch, but still not a good call. They're going to have to settle for another field goal. And now it is 10 to 9, first and 10 for the Gamecocks. They're going to run a flea flicker. Braden Davis wants to go deep down the field, and it's going to be caught and dropped by Sampson. His defender actually fell down, but he got enough hands on it to make it knock out. And now a third and eight is almost intercepted by Drayden Norwood. He would have had a pick six, but Braden Davis' struggles continue today as they are now finally under 20 seconds left in the third quarter. It's going to be a run. This time, M. Nori is in the backfield immediately. And that is a one-yard loss for Tavoris Jones. He has not gotten any consistent running today second and 11 horns gonna take it he's gonna play action he's gonna roll out has a guy wide open instead settles for the deep pass and he's got horse camp who's wrestled down by him and worry ryan horse camp but he had wisner wide open on the right side and he had about 20 yards of field in front of him now tavoris jones on second and 10 gonna make it a third and short he's got eight yards 80 rushing yards for the tigers most of that came off of that 66 yard run from Sam Horn, now third and two. It's going to be a play-action bootleg. Horn's going to fire to horse camp. Had it at the nine, but he drops it. And the Tigers looking for the lead now. They're going to settle for another field goal. Their fourth of the day. And now a fourth and seven in the fourth quarter. They're going to take the lead. All kinds of fours in that sentence. And now the Gamecocks, we've got to answer now. Third and ten is going to start the drive. Braden Davis holds it as long as possible and delivers to Landon Sampson. He does a nice job of coming down with it. Second and eight now for the Gamecocks. Braden Davis gives it to Lavacia Carroll up the middle. Carroll with a nice seven-yard catch in or run there up the middle. Now third and one. A short gain needed, but Carroll wrapped up and pushed forward. I thought he may have fell down forward far enough, but instead is a fourth and inches. Gamecocks go for it, and Carroll's got it, and then some. A nice Stack the box and run it down the middle there. Second and 10 now. Braden Davis rolls out. Fires to DJ Long, who's quickly brought down by the shoulder pads. But instead, it is a first and 10 inside the 30. Now at the 24. Braden Davis, first and 10 to the end zone. And it's caught. Time on row. 24 yards out. The backup tight end 
strikes again. And Braden Davis with his second touchdown of the day. He's protected the ball very effectively as well. And the Tigers now second and six lit up. Tavares Jones had no chance. That's a two-yard loss. And the Gamecocks defense continues to stand strong here now. Third and eight. Sam Horn's going to call some audibles. He's going to take the snap all alone. It's going to be a QB draw. He does get about four, but a questionable, questionable call. And they're going to give it back to us. 17-12, second and 11. Davis is going to go to his backup running back. Brandon Hammond is boosted out of bounds. And now a third and six for the Gamecocks. Two catches for 10 yards for Brandon Hammond, as you can see. And the clock will continue to click down as we have a chance to basically run this down inside of three minutes if we really want to. And that could be the best case scenario, in my opinion. You know, third and six, you've got a chance to run things down and really just run the clock off a delay a game, though. They're going to let it go down a little too far, so that's going to set up a third and 11 for the Gamecocks. Braden Davis is going to take the snap. Fired a Sampson on a quick curl route. And despite the penalty, they get the first down. Only 155 passing yards on the day. They have a third and seven now inside a field goal range? Question mark? Possibly. And now it is a third and seven for the Gamecocks. And that is going to be a two-yard run from Carroll. And that is going to set up a long field goal on fourth and five. That is up and it is good. So an eight-point lead for us, 20-12, to 12, 205 left. Horn's going to start the drive with a nice run. Finally, Tavoris Jones gets some space. Unfortunately, all of that room is swallowed up by Donovan Westmoreland. And that is a third and six setup now. Horn's going to take the snap. He wants to throw, rolling under pressure, and he's sacked. Rory Patrick had his open arms waiting for Horn. And now it is a fourth and 13 for the game, the Tigers, really, you need a miracle here. Sam Horn's going to fire, and it should have been picked off. Instead, Keenan Nelson taps it to the ground. And the defensive struggles today continue for both teams now. Lavacia Carroll's got the nice run. He fumbles it, but Lucas picks it up. They almost got second life there. But instead, the recovery goes back to Carolina. Carroll's got it on a third and 12, cutting outside. And they're going to run this one down. Fourth and six. You can basically just end the game here. They're lined up, but I doubt they run the play. Is now four seconds left. And now it is going to be a 20-12 to final score. Carolina going to knock off the 17th ranked Tigers. Missouri, you've got to give them credit. They played hard today, but they just didn't quite play good enough. As you can see, Mizzou, a good defensive effort. But the Gamecocks came out on top. We saw some spots that were rusty in some spots that really need some improvement over the next few weeks for Carolina. But you've got to be happy about this win. 13 of 29, 155 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions is the biggest one. He did get sacked four times, which is not ideal for your quarterback to get hit that many times. But at the end of the day, you'll take it as long as you win. The running game struggled. Lavacia Carroll, 21 of 62. Brandon Hammond only had two of eight. Couldn't really get anything going open in the open field. Not great blocking by our offensive line. And now receiving-wise, Sampson, 4 for 52. Carroll, 2 for 15 and a touchdown. He added that, and that was really the turning point there. Time on row as well, 1 for 24 and a touchdown from that backup tight end spot. As now on defense, Donovan Westmoreland had 10 total tackles, 4 for loss. A good job there. Quan Banks, Three tackles for loss, eight total tackles for him. He was second on the team. Sacks-wise, Cole Robinson had a sack. Rory Patrick added three sacks, as you can see. I forgot to mention Kwan Banks with the interception. He returned for about 10 yards. Rory Patrick is going to be amazing next year and his senior year. I'm so happy that we're going to have him around for a few more years. But other than that... Nobody else really presented anything. Sean Jones, the sophomore, had that one tackle for loss. That was really his first time on the field. And now it is a uphill battle to get into the SEC Championship. But most of that hill has been climbed by the Gamecocks. And as you can see, we sit at a solid, solid spot in our conference standings. But we're going to go around the league, top or around the country. Top 25 matchups are always fun to look at. Texas Tech is going to win theirs. 31-28 to as they beat Iowa State. Now LSU and Texas A&M are going to have a rivalry going on there. The Tigers upset the Aggies 44-31. to A good upset there. Arizona 
And Oregon State, the eighth-ranked Wildcats, stand at number eight and seven and zero oh now, thirty-eight to seven over the Ducks, or excuse me, the Beavers. I just committed treason there, called them the Oregon Ducks. And talk about the Oregon Ducks. Speaking of which, how about eight and zero oh for them? They win that one over Stanford, just barely, forty-five to forty-two. That touchdown with eight seconds left in the game is going to win them that one as they stay undefeated with a hope at getting to the national championship game. Middle Tennessee State is having a good year. They're 7 and 0 there. The new Power 5 powerhouse 41 to 17 for them. Nice win Notre Dame. If you guys saw that Ohio State game in real life, that finish was crazy, but they're going to win this one 31 to 10 over the Wolfpack Nevada through two pick sixes to uh Notre Dame's defense. So that's not a good recipe for success. Um, West Virginia is going to win or look to upset Baylor. They're going to be defeated, though, 42-26. to So the Baylor Bears sit at number three in the country at 8-0. and And they're looking to be the next Big 12 team to make a deep run into the national championship or maybe the playoffs if I can get that to work this year. 42-21 to for K-State. They beat up on BYU. Um, the Wildcats are 7-0. and Ohio State 6-0, and looking to go 7-0. and They are. Why not? 59 to 23. Wasn't really a concert. It was 14 to 6 at the end of one. Ohio State scored 17 unanswered in the second, and that one really blew open. Florida Atlantic now continues their perfect season. So we've got a few interesting Power Five teams or non Power Five teams. Florida Atlantic is 7 0. Boston College taking on Wake Forest, a ACC matchup. The Demon Deacons. Had a tough few weeks. They got back in the win column last week, but they're going to get it upset in overtime, 34-27. to Duke taking on Miami. The Hurricanes looking to stay positive. They're going to take that one at 5-3 and three now. They're going to win that 38-21. to A nice game by the Hurricanes and a tough, tough loss for the Blue Devils. But at the end of the day, they're still going to, you know, you're, you're still happy with competing to some degree unfortunately for them they look like they are eliminated from bowl contention two of six or two and six now they'd have to win four straight california is going to upset utah 35 to 21 virginia tech looking to take down the tar heels two undefeated acc schools and the Hokies upset the fourth ranked tar heels now 41 to 17 drake may just always, they seem to lose one game. They should a rivalry game here, Alabama and Tennessee. The Crimson Tide six and one, and Tennessee four and two, looking to get back into this one. Thirty to twenty-seven, a tough fought game, but Tyler Simpson and the Tide come out on top, as you can see in overtime. A couple field goals win that one, and finally a MAC contest: Northern Illinois taking on Western Michigan. And yeah, Northern Illinois 35, Western Michigan 18. So they are another undefeated team. They are 8-0 on the year. And that is going to be where we stand for this episode. I'm pretty much um, no new news as far as recruiting goes. But next week, we'll be taking on Vanderbilt a little bit of a break from ranked teams. But Vanderbilt, they were able to upset Georgia a few weeks ago. They have a 4-3 and record. They are not nearly as bad as we're used to they've got some good passing defense they're going to be a dangerous team as you can see they lost to arkansas they lost to mid tennessee middle tennessee and missouri but outside of that they beat florida they beat georgia they beat georgia tech they beat mississippi ole miss so vanderbilt not a team we're going to have to take lightly as always though if you guys did enjoy this episode hit the like button subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload in this series and i'll catch you all next week or next episode Adios, everybody.